Let's do it. Let's do the damage. Okay, order of operations. Uh, Mike, just to let you know, we're going to talk. Did Brad already tell you? Not really. Oh, okay. We're we're going to, I guess, bring little. you in. We have a little giveaway that we're doing right now. We're just going to promote for a minute. Uh, we'll talk about the Ray Orf tournament. Yeah. And then then we can kind of just talk about maybe you at Junior Gold. What's going on? How's it going? You know, I got some questions on that. And kind of just bullshit. Yeah. We'll we're live, there. by the way. What are about? <laughs> We've been live for 45 seconds. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do your shows here, so. <laughs> Hey guys, oh, in case it, you're man. wondering, that's what we're going to talk I about just, today. I, I love that so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so heads up. <laughs> yo, Kyle, I'm in the U15 division. Oh, there's probably a lot of youth watching. Hey, um, okay, so first things first, there's a giveaway we're doing. You can win a dark code. And I put the link in the description right now. It's hey, under the... Up. And an annual Brad and Kyle membership. And an annual Brad and Kyle membership. You win that too. That's the real beauty in that is the real beauty. I know. Way better. One ball ball could be good, but a full year of coaching could change your life. Right? Uh yeah. You never know. We're life changers. Um okay, so that link is in the description. We will draw those winners at the end of July. So you have until August to, to get in. Secondly, and something that Kyle and I have briefly discussed, we want to start getting into the details. But this fall, we don't really have a whole lot going on. We have nothing but time. And considering Kyle can't stay healthy, he really has nothing yeah. but time. Like, how are you feeling right now, man? Anyway, uh, so terrible. Uh, in this fall, we have time. So what we want to do is we want to travel and we want to go around from ideally center to center and just run clinics and just put together this tour of clinics that we run. Maybe it's a month, maybe it's two months, maybe it's worldwide. If you're internationally, you can still reach out to us. But if you are a proprietor listening, if you are a youth bowler, a bowler in a center at all that you think would be interested in hosting a clinic by Kyle and I, and probably Daniel for some of them, but anyway, we would love to put together something to where we come to you guys and we just put on clinics and however long it takes, it takes. So um, brad.kyle300 at Gmail. I'll put that in the, the, com the comment section. But if you are a center or are in a center that would be interested, contact us, email us, reach out to us, and we'll try and start putting something together. But I think that'd be a lot of fun. Okay. Those are the two things, right, Kyle? Yeah. It'd be good. That'd be fun. I'd like <laughs> to do some clinics. We've talked about clinics before. Um, it'd be a good time to, you know, one, interact with a lot of the fans, and then two, help yeah. people with bowling. Uh, you know, obviously, we we take a lot of enjoyment out of that, and, you know, I love having those kind of conversations, and uh, maybe go see some people that don't get to see us all the time. I mean, we're It would just be cool to hit the road, man, for sure. Yeah. Um, It'd be good. Okay. Hey, Mike. <laughs> We have the Mike Flanagan in the house. Thanks. I'm sure everyone watching knows who this man is because he's just the most famous person in bowling. Well, for a guy that's not a bowler, he spends way more time in bowling centers than we do. I know. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I love the text. Hey, Mike, what are you doing? Oh, I'm in a bowling alley. I'm like, Dude, I haven't bowled in a month. And <laughs> dude doesn't even throw a bowling ball. No, I'm, I'm in one of your instructional videos, though, throwing a bowling ball. Have you? You are. You are. That's true. That's yeah. one of our best videos we've ever done, actually. I, I'm the, uh, what am I, the amateur? You are the amateur. Yeah. And then I believe there were a few comments that said, man, I wish I threw it as good as this amateur. <laughs> I screenshot those and blew them up, and they're on my wall. Were those your other aliases on YouTube? Uh, did you plant those? You sure? No. No. <laughs> No, so I do think I am I am checking real quick, but I also think you are our most viewed podcast potentially. Yeah, it was more of a business podcast and more of a story of you it was guys. A good one. Yeah, it was great. I'm happy yeah. to be back. You know? Yeah, you're a junior gold right now? Yeah. Yep. I'm at Strike Force Lanes. So uh, I 
So we let let's let's uh let's get the business out of the way first. Yeah, yeah. we got some stuff we want to talk about. What we want to talk to Mike about. He's at Junior Gold. Uh, me and Brad weren't able to make it this year, but Mike's there live streaming, which is cool. We're gonna get into that first. We want to get into a tournament that's gonna be happening in St. Louis. Um, obviously, I'm from St. Louis. Brad's kind of like an honorary honorary like St. Louis member thing. Like he's there. He lived there for a little bit, but uh, he doesn't have a key to the city, but he has like. Um, he has a toll pass to get. Yeah, it. <laughs> right. He can come and go as he pleases. Right. Um, but what we want to talk about is there's a tournament coming up called the Ray Orf 890 Open. I believe it's August 14th and 15th. Um, Sports Shot Tournament in St. Louis, doubles event. Last year's winners were Cameron Doyle and Greg Young. And I, uh, we wanted to just talk about this for a little bit because it's a great tournament, great ran, uh, greatly ran tournament. Mike's going to be live streaming it. Um, it's going to be on Sports Shot. And it's, uh, it, one of the cool things about this event is we're, uh, we're remembering one of the greatest bowlers that has ever graced the St. Louis area in Ray Orf. Uh, you know, it's called the 890 Open because uh, he Ray Orf shot 890. I believe it was in like 72, 1972, Western Bowl. Yeah, Western Adult Child League with his son Rich. Yeah, with Rich, and uh, and at first it wasn't recognized, and right by the USBC, it still isn't. Still isn't. And do no. they have legal disputes on that at yep. all? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, and if. For me, growing up in St. Louis, uh, you know, uh, Ray Orf is always known as one of the legends. Uh, never really took the PBA career path, is from what I've been told. But it seems like when I go talk, when I go hear about Ray Orf from other PBA professionals, you know, they all knew who this guy was. So it, you know, he, uh, it's kind of believed that he could have been one of the greats. Uh, but, you know, just didn't choose that path. You know, the PBA life, especially living it and kind of knowing it's about a little bit, is not for everyone, especially when you have a family that you want to provide for, uh, you know, kids, wife, whatever the case may be. It is a very tough life. But anyway, there's an 890 tournament coming up. Uh, I'm in, uh, remembering Ray Orf. Mike, do you have anything to touch up on that? I mean, it's yeah, a really so, cool event. We bowled it last year. Yeah, so it was great. I think you guys had a had a women's event, and then we had the, the Ray Orfs. I came in and streamed it for the weekend. It was great to see everybody in St. Louis. We had a, a really good viewership, both on your channel and, and my channel, and the whole weekend was just wonderful. Steve Orf joined in the booth. We had a lot of guests and everything. You guys called the women's action. This year, obviously, things have evolved. We don't have COVID going on, so it's just the, the Ray Orf event. Larry Husky, his team, and everybody in St. Louis have all come together to have this event at St. Charles Lane. So I know Larry still has some entries available. You can check that out at Part-Time Bowlers Tour on Facebook, or you can check out Larry Husky on Facebook, or I know these guys share it. I share it on Inside Bowling as well. To speak to Ray Orf, just to, just to let you know, Ray Orf was kind of cut from the same cloth as Nelson Burton Jr. They kind of threw it the same way. There's some YouTube videos out there of Ray Orf bowling, Jack Buck commentating, things like that. There's, there's some sort of stat that the amount of tournaments that Ray Orf entered on the national tour and that he cashed in was was really high. Um, I don't remember the number exactly. Yeah. But, but what happened was he was madly in love with his wife, Sandy. And they had three children, uh, Ray, Steve, and uh, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on their daughter's name, and that is so terrible of me. But he had three children, and he loved his wife and his family so much that they uh, – that he decided not to go out on tour, but he still managed Western bowl and then started Ray Orr's pro shop. So he was still involved in the business. So the biggest contrast I can make right now is Mike Fagan, right? Mike Fagan bowled on tour. Obviously he won a bunch of titles. So a little different than Ray or so to speak, but Ray did it earlier than Mike um, made the decision earlier than Mike did. And now Mike's running bowling centers with Robbie Spigner up in Minnesota and Ray Orff started a pro shop and managed Western Bowl in St. Louis. So he still did a lot for bowling, just in a different capacity than throwing the ball down the lane. Yeah, Ray Orff's pro shop obviously is you know still a thing to this day. It's still a very successful pro shop. They're doing a lot of great things there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like Mike said, uh, you can Larry Husky. We'll share it. Uh, you can go to our Facebook pages, Brad and Kyle. I'm sure Inside Bowling is sharing it on their Facebook pages. Uh, but we contact Larry Husky. You can contact him on Facebook or um, 
He has a phone number posted on the fly. If you see that, he accepts all calls. So feel free to call him. Uh, like I said, it's a doubles tournament. It's in St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, August, that was 14th and 15th, I believe. Yep. That's Saturday, Sunday. Um, I'll be there because I'm just going to watch. I'll just be <laughs> hanging out. Brad's going to be uh, bowling tournaments on the professional ranks. Yeah, I will not be there. But uh, Kyle, we have room for you in the booth if you want to join for any amounts of time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'll come up and... Hang out for a little bit. You know me. I'm going to try to be there. <laughs> He's going to reel me in six hours later. Ah, you can leave now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you much. But anyway, we just wanted to talk about that. Uh, always trying to promote great things in bowling, and especially coming from uh, my home city, kind of all of or Mike's home city. Brad, like we said, it's kind of an honorary member. Uh, we want to make sure we got that tournament out there because it is a great event. Now, there it is. And it's fun. We bowled it last year. Great field. It's a sports shot tournament. Uh, these people that run these tournaments are just do a fantastic job. So in case you guys have never bowled, if you want to come in from out of town and bowl it, there's they do number. an awesome yeah. job. So there's phone number. Oh, so, you do podcasts too, so I should call it out. Uh, audio format only. 314... Jeez, my eyes. 610. Is that a 6 or a 5? 6, yep. 314 610 3081 to get signed up for the Ray Orf 890 Open August 14th and 15th, St. Charles, St. Ah. Louis, Missouri. $250 per team. It's a doubles event. Is there another event that weekend? Are they coupling anything up with it? No. Nope, just, just that one? Okay. Yeah. And it's just uh, that one. Yeah. 5000 for first. It's a good event, and Larry listens to the players. I remember there was something that happened last year when we were bowling in the match play portion, and uh, there was some hiccup, and no one knew what to do. But Larry was just like, you know, listening to the players and kind of figuring out what they wanted to do. I mean, it's it's a good term. He really cares about it. Yeah, they do the right thing. It's yeah. a, you know, th these these are the events that I bowl every weekend in town, and uh, you know, it's gonna be good. One of, the, one of the best things as a bowler is to have a great tournament director, someone you can trust, someone you can rely on. These are the guys. These guys are blasting you for the gain on your mic. Yes, uh, they are. Really? Yeah, they are saying that you're just super loud. You're oh. the guy on Xbox that always breathes heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, gains high or whatever, but the one I'll thing I love about Kyle it away a little bit is Kyle always projects his voice to the back of the room, which is what you're supposed <laughs> to do in public speaking. So I'm loud too. I just happen to have a mixing board here because I happen to be set up at the United States Bowling Congress Junior Gold. So yeah, yeah the order. Right. you're yeah, a junior, junior gold. gold. What's happening, man? Streams every day. Um, so explain what you're doing. You're live streaming Junior Gold. You're, are you set up at one bowling alley and you're just – Right now, yeah. So so I'll make this as short as possible because it's not that interesting really what, what I'm doing. The competition's interesting, but what I'm doing isn't interesting. But Monday through Thursday of last week, I streamed with Jason Thomas and Aaron Smith, the under-20 boys and girls, because they are now actually men and women, and they're adult bowlers now. So they bowl for money or scholarship. And because of safe sport, they can't have – all of those people would have to be safe sport compliant and go through all that rigmarole, so to speak, to yeah. be able to bowl in the same buildings with the younger kids to be safe sport in today's world. So they moved it up to the front of the thing. Wow. And last year it was um, changed for USBC youth membership 20 to 18. Now you, you can't be a – youth member over the age of 18. I was wondering that. Yeah. So that's kind of the deal. So we did that. And then we had to step ladder on Saturday. And I, this is, this is the coolest part for me. I get to do the, the I'm the lead play by play with Carolyn Doran Ballard. I got bowling balls being dropped around me right here. Um, with Carolyn Doran Ballard, I got to call the finals of the, of the U20 boys and girls or men and women's, whatever you like to call it. Uh, which was amazing. Uh, it was really cool. Brooke Roberts won for uh, the young ladies, and then uh, Cameron. On the inside Cameron Crow beat uh, yeah. Kaplinger. So 
and they're roommates. So it was really cool. And I got to call the action and it felt amazing. It's being dropped on uh, USBC's YouTube page today, actually, the edited version of it. Uh, and that's a tremendous honor to be able to sit there and call Junior Gold. And I get to call all three of the next shows coming up this Saturday on Bull TV. So, you know, if you'd have told me when I was a kid watching bowling on TV, watching CDB absolutely dominate the 90s, then in 2021, the USBC would trust me <laughs> with their flagship youth event, the biggest bowling youth tournament in the world, and that I would get to do the play-by-play -play with Carolyn Doran Ballard for four shows. When in years past, it's been people like Dave Ryan, along with, you know, Randy Peterson, Kelly Kulik, and Dave Lamont, people like that, and I get to do it this year. Um, I got to pinch myself on that one, guys. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, you worked. You, to be fair, you have worked hard for it. I mean, when it comes to live streaming, I mean, you're kind of the guy. Well, I I, I appreciate that. Um, and to, I mean, I know if we need something live streamed, <laughs> you know who you know who we call, or if we have something that we uh, <laughs> someone has a question. But I mean, you have put in the work. I mean, and it's nice to see that this, you know, all that work that this opportunity kind of came to fruition here and kind of knocked on your door. And I mean, how can you turn that up, right? Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's wonderful. It's a tremendous opportunity. So then, you know, we we after we did the shows, which Curtis Von Kruger lit beautifully, we had two manned cameras, everything was awesome. Then we had to pack everything up and go over to the trade show to do the junior gold live. We did two, you know, variety shows over there for two oh, hours yeah. each. Uh, which you guys are very, very familiar with that. Which I'm absolutely shocked, by the way. I'm that, a <laughs> that storm didn't send you guys here. I am absolutely shocked at that. I thought for sure I would see you guys here. Um, but, hey, I just know what the line was like for you only, Kyle, a couple of years ago as we snuck out to grab some <laughs> robbers. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it would have been fun. I definitely missed it. I almost thought about just driving up because uh, uh, I guess we just, I don't know, like Storm has a ton of staffers, uh, and we just we thought about getting a booth, and then it's just a lot of money, and uh, – we were like, ah, maybe we'll go with Storm. And then that didn't really pan out. And then, uh, you know, and obviously they have so many good staffers. You can't even say oh, that. Oh, sure. Some Absolutely. can't be there. I and so, that. but I'm only four hours away. And uh, I almost thought about just driving up to the convention <laughs> just to hang out. I really did. <laughs> I didn't have much going on. I was like, man, I might just, I might just come out. I had like three people seriously come up to me. And that's not a lot. A few people come up to me and go, hey, you're the guy from Brad and Kyle's channel. <laughs> <laughs> um but anyways so i have my own youtube channel uh, yeah. it's, YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, it's only like thirty-five thousand stuff yeah, no you, guys are, you guys are what like three thousand away from uh a big number 100k yeah no, we're it's still like four isn't it nice yeah it's something like somewhere on there well congratulations anyway, it will get there we'll get there next year <laughs> we just gotta pump out some videos yeah so, but, to, uh, so hey. to wrap up what i'm doing here uh, yeah we did that then we had to tear all that down then we had to set up uh, in four separate bowling centers. So I'm at Strike Force, uh, JT's at Western, uh, Aaron Smith is at Expo Bowl, and then Curtis Von Kruger's at All Star. And we're, we're streaming four streams from each location. So we have 16 streams plus a main channel that we all come in the stream yard and then push out whatever we want. So we have 17 streams total at one time, which is pretty intense and insane. Insane. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to date you here, but did yeah. you bowl the first ever junior yeah. gold? Yep, nineteen ninety. Okay. Yeah. All right, made the cut. <laughs> made the cut. Finished in the top thirty. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, dominated the nineties. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what I, I wanted to, saying, what I wanted here. you to kind of talk about is, I mean, if you you know take a step back to reflect, how crazy different is this event from the first ever junior gold to now? The well, evolution real quick, of it. Before you answer that, yeah. How many people do you see vlogging? How many kids are vlogging? A, a few. Like Lewis Luna is here. Lewis Luna is here. Um, there's not. A, there's really not a ton of it that I've seen. Not a ton. Okay. But I haven't been looking for it either. But I would say at the trade show, I saw maybe like five or six people walking around with cameras with like road mics. So you know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, imagine being in Justin Bones' position. We started this YouTube channel at 26. He started. How old is he? 17. Yeah. Could you imagine starting that young? And just getting like such a big head start before you go to college. Yeah, we and didn't even the, guy, the, in college. the guy right <laughs> now who's who's kind of the guy that's swarming around gathering data, trying to figure out what he wants to do. I guess he's doing an internship with the PBA now, is Bryce Catahan. 
That's that's the that's the next one to look for. Uh, is he? Does he want to work for the PBA or does he want to do his own thing? I haven't talked to the to the. I haven't talked to him. All I know okay. is PBA released. Hey, they they were looking for interns I or saw that. with content. They announced Bryce Catahan's the guy. Aaron Smith said Bryce is here, has been picking his brain on how to do things, how to stream, all this kind of stuff. So he's what I'm saying is he's swarming, he's lurking, and he's a nice. smart kid, and he's well respected. And uh, he's I think he's just gathering all the all the data before he he hits to the I mean he's got a YouTube channel. I mean he's the guy that went out there and said all kinds of positive things about USBC a couple years ago. USBC shared it, so um, but he's kind of the next one, I think. Okay. So uh, first junior gold and now. Yeah. Um, well, the first junior gold, it was junior Olympic gold, and it was just this event that nobody knew about that they were just jog. doing, right? Yeah, jog. To, to Do try they to call it jog anymore? No, no, no. That's like that's like uh -huh. forbidden words. Kind of like Team EBI and the Brunswick family. You don't say that anymore. <laughs> really? <laughs> I still call it jog. Not going to lie. No, it's not jog. It's not junior Olympic gold. <laughs> junior gold, for crying out loud. So, um. Anyhow, uh, we don't well, say the word Olympic. Yeah, we don't say that. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so so it was just a, a, the scratch singles tournament, right? So if you're 12 years old and you come out, you had to beat Stephanie Johnson, right? When yeah. 18. So it just doesn't make any sense. Are we still on? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna make it just you. <laughs> Oh no! You don't have to do that. We're, we're solo good. layout. Yeah, there we go. Well, you get to see parents here. So oh, that's true. <laughs> no, it's cool. You're just going to see all kinds of cool foot traffic here. People I walk. hope they get a text. Be like, I saw you on the Brad and Kyle show. Yeah, no, oh, they come like waving. Back bar right behind me. Uh, so in 2012, that's when they decided, hey, we got so much interest in this thing, we need to give, we need to create this as like single A, double A, triple A. Right. I mean, that's kind of how baseball works. It's how all the other sports work. There's a stair step. So they did it by division. So that way, if you're 12 years old, you don't have to beat Stephanie Johnson, but you can still gain that experience to, to make a cut, to make it into match play and then to potentially to make a show. Right. And it's grooming. It's grooming our young athletes to become junior team USA. We're, that, that's what this whole thing is about. It's about trying to represent our country in junior team USA and groom them that way and build, build something in on the most demanding, challenging conditions you'll ever run into. They have a different pattern every day. Now back then they didn't. So the, the evolution is more divisions, right? More divisions so that more kids can compete and go through cut processes and all that, instead of just getting their brains beat in. And then each division, you know, boys and girls, which they had from the very beginning, is just is just what it's become. So, I actually have this uh, this screenshot here in my phone of how many entries we have this year by division. U twenty boys and girls because it's new and different. One fifty seven and seventy eight were the entries, boys to girls. Then on U eighteen boys, we have thirteen hundred sixty nine, wow. and they cut one in seven. U uh, eighteen girls six forty, seven thirty eight on the U fifteen boys. 351 on U15 girls, 236 on U12 boys, and uh, 115 on U12 girls. So 1,300, just 18 to 16? Yeah. Or is it 18 to 17? 18, 18 to 16. 18 to 16. So my one of my last junior golds, I guess I was 16 in Buffalo, there were just like 1,200 guys total, period whole thing and then maybe like 600 girls or something so they have that just in the ages of 16 to 18 yeah yeah i tell you what this was and i was thinking about this the other day when you know you started seeing all the posts from junior gold you know when i was growing up i mean bowling use this was always my favorite time of the year i mean i don't think i've ever looked forward more to a tournament than junior gold uh, as a kid i mean it was just the months of kind of training practicing bowling on different patterns and then you're so excited to be there and then you get there and you see all these guys that you only see once a year and you know you think like for me i was like man i throw good like i'm from st louis i'm the best youth bowler i'm gonna go beat everyone and then i get there and i'm like oh okay and it's just <laughs> it's a different it's a different atmosphere what's cool now though 
I mean, I'm sure these kids still kind of feel that way. But, man, there's so much more to bowl as a youth that these kids probably see each other more now and kind of familiar with each other and know who's good from where. I know when I was bowling, I mean, I bowled in St. Louis, and then I bowled at Junior Gold once a year. That was it. Yeah, and for me, Kyle, uh, when I was a youth bowler, we're talking mid to late 90s, I, I bowled the West Alice Red Carpet Lanes Tournament. I bowled Youth Masters is what it was called at the time. I bowled Heart of Illinois Youth Classics, and I bowled the the Jeebas, the Greater Iowa Bowling Association. Yeah, I bowled one of those before. Bowled so one. I tried to get out and bowl as many things outside of St. Louis because I knew through AOL message boards, the Yaba message boards back in the day, <laughs> that we got ripped on for being too easy and that we weren't good. So I wanted to go out and test myself in other cities, and I started becoming friends with like Rory Kalonquin, Bill O'Neill, um, a guy by the name of Scott Bruner, who was actually here the last squad watching his kid bowl, um, you know, Deandra, you know, all these different people uh, that were in the message boards, you know, and I remember all their old screen names, Alex Caballero, you may remember, you may know him, all yeah. these guys, and he was younger, you know, back then, but, you know, th and I got to go out and bowl all these things, but yeah, Junior Gold, right, that was kind of the event where you started kind of networking, they didn't have social media back then and everything, and you hit the nail on the head, man. What Storm has done with their SYCs, yeah. that has connected. I, I've seen so many SYC jerseys here, man. If any, uh, Storm has hit a home run with the SYCs because I, I, yes. that's brought them all together. I mean, that's brought them all together. <clears throat> and hopefully I'm, it's really early in the venture, but the PBA Junior, if they can really ride that ship correctly and just, you know, Create good relationships, run good, solid tournaments, make sure it's a good atmosphere for the kids, keep it, you know, very friendly and supportive of everyone else in the industry. If they, you know, there could seriously be a lot of tournaments for a youth bowler. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. We have, I'm, so, we, I'm so jealous of the opportunities maybe. that they have these days. I mean, and, and then also you take into account, Mike, you said the U20 division, they can receive money now. It's yep. like an actual tournament. Yeah, there are that is. Members. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I mean, my last few youth years uh, at Junior Gold, man, if I could have got a little bit of cash <laughs> instead of scholarship money, I mean, it was all the same. I spent it on school anyway, but uh, <laughs> man, that would have been, that would have been nice. <laughs> i tell you what. Imagine if, okay, question to you guys. Matt, what youth bowler or what colleague of your age group do you think would have had the best social media when you guys were like 15 or 16? Who would have been the, who would have been the guy, who would have been the most popular? Who would have been the guy popping? I think your, my era would have been probably Andrew Koff. Just some like dynamite kid from Miami. I would have loved to just watch because he would have filmed himself practicing because that's all he did. And I would have just watched it all day as like a, and he was like three years younger than me. And I still would have watched it because he was that good. <sighs> I, 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 but it's I, it's different now because of imagine being able to see people's your your competitors' social media in California when you're from New York or something like. Here, here's what I think. it would be somebody around. it would be somebody we don't even know that would have just been excelled at the social media, right? Like that's what I think because <clears throat> it, it would have had to have been Rory Kalonquin who wanted nothing to do with a cell phone or anything back then, even or a pager or whatever the hell we had, right? <laughs> uh, Brian Hatcher was also an extremely great bowler, went on to bowl for Wichita. Great guy, still talk to him. I don't think he'd have been all over social media. Fagan is the other guy from my era, and he he did okay on social media, but he wouldn't have been all about that no. business. Um, it's different now. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, it would have been somebody we don't even know, somebody we haven't heard Probably. of. But I do know because Deandra's from my era. Deandra would have killed it. Deandra would have slayed. She would have yeah. yeah. crushed it. Steph Johnson would have crushed it. But I will tell you, back in the day, Stephanie Johnson was dating PJ Haggerty. Yep. And they had one Facebook page called Steph and PJ. Aw. And they didn't Aww. have personal ones? No, they had they just had one together. together. <laughs> when they broke up, it was like, no, oh my God, what, what, who's going to take over? The, like, who's got it? Oh, I've it. never even talked to them about this. But I need I to. I love it. Yeah. That's funny. 
Definitely. PJ PJ would have been a, a stud back then on social media too. Yeah, and he was just a couple awesome. years couple years later than yeah, he was a couple years before me. My first yeah. couple years of junior gold was him crushing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the community, social media, Storm, PBA, USBC. Uh, we're coming out of this coming out of this pandemic. We're gonna see a little rush, a little bowling rush, Mike. Yeah, I you know. We've already kind of seen it, right? I think we are. I think we're seeing it. The the the, the big thing, like if you want a hot topic to talk about here, um, and I got about 20 more minutes with you guys, and, and I'd like to come back on and we can talk about some bigger topics. I know we're here to promote the, the Ray Orff thing. I see tons of people in the chat saying, you guys need to vlog again. Like that, That's what everyone wants to see is you guys vlogging, not, <laughs> not, not talking to me. Vlog. Your, pod, your podcast views are, are mediocre at best here. So, folks, but this <laughs> is where you can get all the inside scoop on what's going on. Um. But the big nugget here, I think, with bowling, because I was at Bowl Expo. I got hired to do that, too. I mean, I'm, I'm everywhere. There, I talked to all the manufacturers, Brunswick, AM, Cubic AMF, and U.S. Bowling. They have zero free fall pin setters being installed on the books right now. Zero. They are all string. Every booked bowling center is putting in string bowling lanes. Just yeah. plastic. I talked to him yesterday. They just built a new beautiful eight lane boutique with a with a high rent district restaurant, a friend of his at Arkansas State. The whole team's moving into there. They put in string, cubic AMF string. Nebraska. I was talking to Klimpa today. They have string. Everything is moving to string, guys. Why? That, that's the be maintenance. You can't find mechanics to operate on these old dinosaur machines. The, they are so simple. You can train. Us three could go through a day of training, and we could fix these things. And on your phone, it tells you when there's getting to be a little bit too much tension on any particular pin on any lane, and you can go over there and fix the problem before it's going to happen. So does do the pins fall similarly? Well, I'm not going to get into all that, Brad. You guys can talk about that until the day. Until the, I, I don't, I haven't. Well, what kind it. of string are we talking about? That string pin bowling that we do in Maine? That's like these tiny little balls. No, 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 no. no. The no, no, no. It's, it's, it's legit. actual lane, actual yeah, bowling actually. ball. Ball yeah. goes through the pins. Yeah, yeah. And it's then just, it's debatable it's, whether or not it's similar or not. No, it's not debatable. But it's anyway, not even we'll talk I'm, about I'm, that. You guys can talk about that when I yeah. get out of here. Okay, but, yeah, but okay. I'm telling you right now. In the in the in the late eighties, early nineties, plastic lanes was like a curse word, and people didn't embrace plastic lanes. I now go to synthetics, okay? Now they're everywhere, okay? The next synthetic lane is the string pin setter, and that's all we're gonna have in probably twenty years. You won't have free fall pin setters anywhere anymore. Yeah. Okay. That's wild. Do you think we could? Put together a true comp state of competition around these string pins. They, they did it. They did it years ago, Brad. Brian Voss was there. All these guys were there when they first invented these things. Look it up. It's like three, four years ago. Maybe so even we've longer. Done this. Uh, they did all the testing. Yeah. Is there feedback? Well, I mean, Tom Doherty bowled too. Hit up TD, our SB winner for the Interesting. year. Interesting. Okay. Um, we should yeah. do. Well, I know the guy who's running the World Bowling Tour now, Andy Aram. Yeah, I know he's like super gung ho. I've been wanting to get him on a podcast, talk to him about it. I'm a little nervous to talk to him about it, though. No, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just prepare. Just prepare, guys, for that one. Um, because I don't know. It's kind. Of, I mean, it's weird that everyone's going in that direction. You know, it, it's affordable. Weird. It makes sense. And guess yeah. what? Here's here's the plus for it, in my opinion. They're cheaper to put in, less maintenance. So when someone's considering putting in laser tag putting in bumper cars, uh, go-karts, miniature golf. Now some of these people that want to build little social houses or things like that have much more comfort to put in some bowling as opposed to basketball machine, ski ball Take your pick, right? And we would rather have many more lane beds to grow bowling all throughout the country. Two, four lane. I mean – just pick any bar in the St. Louis or KC area where you guys are from. Imagine putting in four lanes. They're not going to bring in a head mechanic 
and all this stuff for that, right? <clears throat> to do that. Well, I was thinking, what if the pins are just normal and there's a string attached to the top of them that's long enough to where all the action happens before the string is like tugged or attached? You well, know that's, what I'm saying? It is. that's pretty much what it is. And yeah. it's still different. It's close, except like strings get tangled. I, I watch, know. It's just, you watch, but, the but there's not there's yeah. not many tangles on these supposedly. But you, you got to think if if nothing is touched until all the pins are down, then it should be similar as long as the. Yeah, let's see. We'll have to do our research on. I'm this. just let, I'm just letting you know that, that is something to be prepared. I know for. I've heard about it too. It's I just haven't gotten the lowdown on it. It's gonna happen. So yeah, it wild. sounds like it. I'm just Dang, telling. That's pretty wild. That's that's my big takeaway from Bowl Expo. Does it? Are the racks? Are they more precise? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't. I can't speak to that. I don't know. <laughs> if I, they're I, less I, precise, okay. Simo, Simo's done. He ain't I, mean, I, can, I, can, I can tell you on a, on a brand new lay machine <laughs> uh, or on a brand new one they had on the demo floor, they spot perfectly. Perfectly. Now, I, can't, I can't tell you after how many games or whatever that it's gonna. But man, the pulley systems and everything, it's it's like one wrench, and you just yeah. Uh, I think it'll be. I, it's going to be different, but like you said, Mike, the big benefit to take away from that is that it has the potential to get a lot more people into bowling, more lane beds, more opportunity, and that's huge. Uh, and then, you know, in 30 years, we're going to be like, back in my day, yeah, we didn't yeah. use any of this string crap. We had real pins. <laughs> hey, real quick, Mike, I wanted to ask you, uh, the acquisition with the ISOS acquisition group and the PBA – it, are you familiar yeah. with it? I mean, I saw everything that came out about it. Is if is it familiar to when AMF got acquired by Goldman Sachs back in the nineties or whatever? Do you think it's like a similar deal? I'm not looking at it because that, that didn't work out too well. No, I'm not looking at it that way. I, okay. I believe this is a completely different structure. Structure. It, 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 it's a SPAC deal, but I just not yeah. too familiar no. on the nineties AMF deal or not. No, I can speak to what I can, and on this. Um, the little bit I've talked to people about, um, it's going to be really, really cool to watch and see what what transpires. Sure. Um, it's exciting. It, it could be right. Could like, be. It, it could I be. Mean. I mean, Bowl Arrow's buying everything. I mean, they're buying up bowling centers everywhere. Like, I think they want every center in the United States. So, yeah. Well, Tom Shan was on CNBC and he said we have eight percent market share in the United States and we want more. So, yep. Said. That's yeah. That's what they want to do. So, so and then go internationally as well. <clears throat> So, yeah, I don't know. Those deals, I mean, you just never really know. It's like this company goes public in March from two Victoria's Secret people, and then they acquire the PBA through the spec. You just never know. I just want, you know, we just want good news. We just want you great know, things to happen. The thing I've always said in this industry, right, and this this is this is probably would be taken as a slam on, on the PBA, but I don't mean it that way at all because there's a lot of different ways to slice a pig or, or be successful and find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, right? But whenever bowling minded people become CEOs or high positioned personnel in the bowling industry, that makes me happy. Me too. Okay. So like Chad Murphy, right? He's in this building right now. And I'd say it if he was here or not here. There are a lot of people that can't stand the man. There are a lot of people that really like the guy. I like him because he he's a bowler, right? And I feel like bowling decisions are made. That does not mean that someone who's not a bowler can't make a good decision for bowling because we need that outside, out-of-the-box thinking to bring it to the mainframe. And I believe I believe Bowl Arrow has done some of that, right? The key is with these new sponsorships is how long do they stay? I've talked to a lot of people at the PBA. When they sign a sponsorship deal for a period of time, the renewal rate is less than 5%. So is Paps Blue Ribbon, Kia, all these other, uh, what's the, the, the meat, the, the non- uh, Guaranteed rate and- Guaranteed rate and the meat one. What's meat the, one. The burger, well, the non- uh, the healthy, Impossible? No, not impossible. The, uh, the healthy choice burger thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't eat it because that's just, I like regular burgers, <clears> but <throat> otherwise I would probably know what it is. Um, but the point is those sponsorships, if they're still here in eight to 10 years, that is- that is groundbreaking, breaking news. They, they should be the person of the year in Bowler's Journal, Coley Edison, 
Bravo. This thing has lasted 10 years with Correct. Him, right, right? Snickers, whatever, whoever they have. That's what everybody needs to watch, right? Because every time new ownerships have come into the PBA, here's a whole bunch of money. You know, PBA is great. And then, okay, Tom, can you get this? Can you just make it break even, please? Right? Kind of sort of deal, yeah. right? And then Tom's got a beg, borrow, steal, pardon, everything he possibly can to keep the tour running. So a lot of publicity. So far, so good. No reason to doubt. Let's keep it going, Bull Arrow. Let's keep it going, PBA. I know. The social media game, they've, they've been doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, they have been. Yeah. So uh, Man Manscape, by the way. Oh yeah, that one too. Yep. I want them to sponsor the channel. That'd be nice. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna tell you guys what I think of that, right? I don't ever like going to the same well. Right? I don't go if I need somebody as part of my team at inside bowling, I don't I don't go to a USBC worker and say, Hey man, you want to come over and work for me? Right? I go and find my own people. <laughs> All right. There's yeah. a lot of people in this industry that go and sure. grab other people. I go and find my own people because I think that's the right way to do it. So Manscaped is with the PBA, Brad. Go find your own sponsor. Okay. We can talk offline about a list of sponsors I think would be great for you guys. Oh, there's millions. Okay. But you don't need Manscaped. You guys can find your own. That's just they my just, uh, Yeah, they just sponsor a lot of internet heavy social media influencers. I get it. So figured it was possible I get it. I understand. <laughs> there's, but there's a there's a lot more of those man oh there's plenty there's oh, a yeah. lot more of those i could see you in some chubby shorts man you some uh me what's the me undies some underwear <laughs> we, need, we need kyle to get in shape man he's our model you need him to get in shape yeah he keeps getting injured and then he's probably you talk 20 about, pounds overweight prime, prime specimen over here <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Well, hey, do you want to go, Mike? No, here, here's the deal. I'll hang out with you guys if you don't if you don't mind having me. I just have to set up these streams while I'm doing this. Unless okay. unless the announcements are just driving you guys absolutely insane. No, it's not even bother me. Um, yeah, I didn't even know they're happening. But we do have something some things we can talk about. The summer tour coming up, which Kyle's out. So all of those events, the Lubbock, Houston, Jonesboro, Coldwater, Virginia, the two regionals. As of right now, Kyle will not be there. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, you're out. Um, so I'll be traveling with Packy and Lubbock. I'll be rooming with Nick, Kevin, and Packy. And then I don't know if we're going back to Wichita or not, but then the Lucy. And then we the next weekend we have Jonesboro, Arkansas. So if you're around there. Um, High Jinx Bowling Center, right? High Jinx, yep. Happy to be back. And then the week after that is cold water. And then the week after that is Virginia. So, and I wasn't, Kyle and I weren't planning on going to cold water in Virginia until recently. Kyle's not going. And I was like, yeah, you know, bowling more sounds better when Kyle's not around, I guess. <laughs> but I'm to the point where it's like, I just want to bowl. I don't even hey, care. so yeah. I just want to, I'm going to throw in a Sweden. liability note right now. Uh, all the fans watch right now, since I'm not going to be there, if you don't see any vlogs, <laughs> no, to blame. Me. there you will be vlogs blame. and also i need a shout out if you're in any of these centers i need the help <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just show up in video for me pretty please that's true <laughs> um but yeah so we have the summer tour and then i would like to put some details together on touring and doing some clinics so that's what we have going on this year i think that's a great idea by the way guys you guys should do that and yeah yeah, we uh, that would be so much fun. I mean, just imagine like maybe starting in Georgia and then going up the East Coast, or then starting in Arizona and going up the West Coast or something. Just making a little tour out of it. Yeah, you can that would be really cool. What's that? You can come out and see me again, and then we can run like this big spectacular end of the tour event. One hundred fifty thousand. Do yeah. Dogecoin to win. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to put it. That's a good idea. Twenty cents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's thirty thousand, right? Yeah. Is 30, it thirty thousand for thirty thousand fifty or one hundred fifty thousand Dogecoin? That would be cool. 
Um, so if you're around, Coldwater's in the middle of nowhere, but they always do a great, they're one of the greatest hosts because they do like a barbecue and they really just make sure that when you go to that event and you're a player in that event, that you are taken care of and a lot of really great things. And it'll be nice to go back to Virginia. I don't, are we doing, uh, Kyle, you don't even know. Um, I was going to say, if they're doing pro-ams, then we'll get to meet a lot of you guys. Um, that's all I got, Kyle. You got anything to say? <laughs> Just listening, man. Who's the guy in the middle of the screen? That is Mr. Mike Flanagan. And you can listen to him broadcast the Junior Gold this whole week. When does it end? Is it just uh, Saturday? Is it those three shows I'm doing with Carolyn. So And they're all live. Yeah, on Bull TV. Um so you know, you gotta subscribe to Bull TV. Um Okay. And uh and then where are you guys pumping content out? Are you guys doing any YouTube? Instagram yeah, yeah, we're doing the uh, we're doing like the first games live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, okay. PC's YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe to them. Um, they're they're trying really hard here, man. I mean, to, to to bring in this many people to put this many streams out, and people still aren't happy. Like, oh, it's not enough streams. I can't watch my kid. Well, I mean, seventeen streams at one time. I mean, I'm gonna go stream. Yeah, an event in St. Louis, Larry Husky's event. I'm gonna have one stream. I might. I feel like I almost. I'm pressured in. I gotta have two now. You know, like yeah, they're running 17. Um, so I mean that. Yeah, that's kind of the issue with making it larger, right? Is you're basically just doubling down on the complaints that you're gonna get as well. And as long as it, you know, keeps going. Uh, but I I love seeing all, like Jillian Martin's 300 video. Yeah, that was a great video for you guys, man. That, that's her first 300 ever. I, dude, I watched her throw the ball. Oh, wow. I, I watched that video yesterday, and I'm like, I want to throw it like her. Like, I actually wanted to go to the bowling alley and do things that she did. She does when she throws the ball. She's sick. There's, there's, there's kids in the under twelve. There's this kid Mateo, ridiculous, ridiculously good. It's. Are, are there any two handed women? Yeah, there's a few. Yep, there's there a few. Now. Okay. Yep. yep. They're coming. Definitely. Without question. Um, Mike, you got any? Uh, you got any predetermined catchphrases for the shows this weekend? No. Oh, you got I, anything? You trying to put? You trying to staple yourself down on some like key phrases? I mean, it could make it could make your career. I mean, uh, you say something great. That's, a, that's uh -huh. how these commentators I think. Mean, man. It's all about that tagline. You could be you the know. next Hambone. I don't Strike know. Strike to claim it. Strike to claim it. <laughs> no, I was actually just talking to Paul Klempa about this because he enjoys my commentary. <laughs> He's one of the few. He's having conversations about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was. But, well, Paul Klimpa saw me on the kind of, hey, Mike, how's it going, man? Hey, by the way, really enjoyed your PWBA coverage. Uh, you entertain me, man. You get me laughing. He's like, not many guys do that, you know, live streaming. It's normally just calling out what's in front of us. I'm like, hey, man, thanks a lot. I was talking about these shows. And the one thing I, 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 I don't want to do is be this guy that talks over the moment. You got to let the moment breathe, right? So Cameron Crow, Cameron Crow needs four pins to win junior gold 2021. And I let him release the ball. He gets his pins. And then you see his raw emotion. And I let that moment breathe and live. It's just like in the World Series, if, if bottom of the ninth, uh, you, you know, the needs a grand slam walk off. It could be, it is, it's gone. And the St. Louis Cardinals <laughs> win the world championship for the 14th time in their career. And then you stop and you let the crowd noise and the guy run the bases and you let all that tell the story. You don't have to be talking about, and David Fries is from this high school, and his wife's name is this, and he's got this many kids, and his aunt and uncles are up in the stands. Look at him. Holy cow. No, let it breathe. All right. That's my – that's my – that's my – That's your that's mindset going in. I like it. I like that. So what time are the shows Saturday? I'll be bowling a regional, but I might be able to watch. I believe 10, 1, and 4. 10, 1, and 4. Okay. Something like that. It's right around that. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Because I'm putting in these stream codes. Got to do four of them here. But. Um, okay. Hey, that's all I had, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, you guys got a really nice membership you guys got going on. I see you guys pushing that on your social media. I was part of that for a while. And, you know, what they do there is wonderful. So make sure you give that a shot if, if you're interested in that. We also have a little bit of a membership over at Backstage Bowling. If you're interested in checking that out as well, I suggest you join both because you can pick up a lot. Um, yes. Both, for sure. And both can coexist in a, in a bowling world, for sure. No problem. And uh, 
I'm just saying, you know, in a world we were talking about the difference between the first junior gold and the junior gold now, the junior gold now, the players have access to things that, I mean, could you imagine having access to Shannon O'Keefe and knowing what the greatest woman bowler, you know, one of them ever could do or does on a daily basis when you're 12 years old? Like, yeah. Pfft. Man, that's invaluable yeah. information. Yeah, and you guys got Daniel and yours, who's yeah is is really good at what he does, and uh, you guys are actively in there showing behind the scenes content on what you guys have going on. So there's a lot of really good products out there. Yeah, definitely that, that give people access that, that we didn't have in 1998 at Junior Gold One. Let's put it that way. I yeah. didn't have it in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I had it in 2012, I wouldn't have thrown a reactor ball from fourth arrow on a short pattern. These kids are way ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, I talked I talked to a kid yesterday. I was actually giving him a hard time, honestly. Um, it was funny. And uh, I looked at his bag. I said, hey, where's your, where's your urethane? I don't have one. I don't need it. Where's your, where's your plastic ball? I, I don't have one. I don't need it. I said, okay, so for nine ninety five a month, I'll help you get ready for junior gold next year. We're gonna get your arsenal lined up perfectly. <laughs> I was kidding with the with with the kid, but truly, that's what's going on here. You gotta prepare properly for this. Yeah, uh, that kid do. sounds like me. It, it does. Actually. It does. I've been the I'm I'm the guy every time that you have your thing. No, and then I lose. So I now put a towel on his head too at one point. Yes. Yeah. I went to nationals this year, and on the first two games of doubles, I shoot 159, 179. And if I would have had your thing, I could have shot 210, 210. And I do this to myself every tournament. <laughs> every tournament. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm taking seven year things to these summer tour events. Seven. I'm going three fast pitches, three pitch blacks, and uh, we'll do that asymmetric red thing, hot cell. <laughs> Did you ever consider just going out there with them, Kyle? Yeah, I thought about it. I mean, I understand like the drawbacks of it, like especially if you're nursing an injury, being out on the road isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. But I know yeah, we get so much there, fun. There's a couple things. Uh, one, yeah, like trying to get it healed and get it better. Um, you know, I've been going to physical therapy two or three times a week, and if I'm not, I just work it out at home. Uh, so there's that. I don't want to, I don't want to be on the road for that Two, Uh, it is, I mean, it's expensive to be out there and not bowl. Um, so that's tough. I mean, there's obviously there's ways we can write that off and work that out, mm -hmm. but it's still at the end of the day, we're spending money. And then three, um, uh, I mean, I know you can look at this how you want, but like the psyche, uh, it's tough on me going out there and being injured and then watching bowling. Uh, I know you can say you can get over that. You can do this. But at the end of the day, you know, like bowling's my passion. Bowling is what I want to be doing. And then to be on the road for six weeks and not bowl and wish I could, uh, that's tough, man. That's that's It's hard to do that. I was pretty down in the dumps over this last injury because anyone that's followed my bowling career over the last few years is known. I'm that, still here, by the way. Yeah. I've dealt with a few. So uh, it's tough to go out there and watch all your friends, your competitors bowl. And then you'd be on the sidelines and not be able to make it happen. So Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be a fun trip. Yeah, it'd be tough. And uh, so I don't know. But my goal, I mean, one of my goals is I'm going to try to bowl next week. I haven't bowled in a month and a half. See kind of how it's feeling, progress. And then if they have openings, I might try to hit the last couple of stops. If I can feel like I'm somewhat ready just to compete, um, we'll see. So... But yeah, first priority of business is getting this shoulder healed up. So I was asking on behalf of the fans. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, they want uh, to you guys. I would like to. That. It would be great for the vlog. I mean, I know they want to see it uh, and everything. Uh, but in, I don't know. We'll see. Talking to Brad a little bit, I might try to hit the last couple of stops with him. He might come back through St. Louis. And then I might hit the last two with him. So that's cool. kind of on the cards. Uh, but I just to be gone for like the whole five week stretch, not bowling. Um, Cause at the same time, like I could be home healing and then trying to get my shoulder ready, figuring out where that's at. So sure. That kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah. And I'm traveling with Packy and this is what he's doing. He's going to Lubbock back to Wichita, Houston, back to Wichita, Jonesboro, back to Wichita, Flying to cold water, flying back, flying to Virginia, flying back. I go, nah, I ain't doing that. 
No chance. I'll stay in St. Louis in between Jonesboro. I'm doing. I'm not doing that. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, that sounds miserable. But yeah, so, so let me plug something before I get out of here. So we've got Larry Husky's event coming up here in, in August. Make sure you sign up for that. Get involved in that. Brad and Kyle um, promoting that, of course. And then in September, I'm going to be at the uh, Kevin Williams doubles event in Springfield streaming that. So make sure you check well, that out. September what? 12th? Uh, yeah, weekend? I think so. Second weekend. Second weekend. Okay. And the next weekend, I'll be at the uh, Ebonite uh, Fall Classic in Waterloo, Iowa that I always do. And then I'm going to have the Nightmare doubles down in uh, Arkansas will be in October, and then Holiday Doubles coming up in December. So I'll have all those events uh, coming up. On, is the Nightmare uh, Doubles, did it used to be, what did it used to be called? I don't know. I streamed it last year. It was the Nightmare Doubles. Oh, last year, think? So. Yeah, they moved it. Last year it was in Jonesboro. This year it's somewhere, where did you say it was? I think Little Rock or something. I think it's just outside of Little Rock somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, but yeah I think it's closer to there. Yeah, and then yeah that was the, a good event. Bold that last year. The then, tournament uh, in Iowa is what weekend? It's the it's fusion after. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the old fusion. It's the Ebonite sponsor now. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And, and then uh, I have merch at insidebowling.com. You guys have merch at thehousebowling.com. If you want to support what I do or what these guys do, it does help every little bit. Absolutely. Merch. So, guys, I got to bounce. It was, right. it was an absolute blast. I hope we didn't bore your your folks to death. But nah, I think they're yeah. good. Uh, I'd like to be on again sometime. I hope you guys yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll chat it up again. Long. It's been too long. So, uh, hey, have a good luck. time. Thanks, good time, Mike. We'll see you. Yeah. See you.